Hey guys, so we had a really great tomato harvest for the garden season of 2021. Um, they've been in the freezer. We packed them, put them in the freezer. Um, so now we're getting ready to thaw them out and make all kinds of different tomato sauces out of them. Let me give you a little sneak peek of what they look like. So I got them sitting in this plastic box here so they can thaw out. Some of them have thawed out. Um, I mean, it's just lots of tomatoes down here that have just been sitting in the freezer all winter long. And seriously, I just want to um, get them out of my freezers and get them processed before the new garden season starts um so yeah we're gonna kind of take you along with us and show y'all how we're gonna process these tomatoes from last year's garden um we've got the kitchen aid mixer here we're just gonna mill them down to separate from skins and seeds uh turn it into just the pulp of the tomato uh, try to get rid of most of the water content so we can have more of a thicker sauce. So yeah, <laughs> we're going to use this bad boy, send them down through here, get them separated. Um, and I've got some season packages here. I don't know if y'all have seen these in the grocery stores where y'all are at. Uh, but yeah, I want to try to make pasta sauce. Some ketchup, pizza sauce, and some chili. Um, I mean, really, you could just go ahead and do all of the tomatoes and add this stuff later, but and you know, make it as you go. But uh, I think we're gonna go ahead and make it up as we process it and can it all up in the end that way it'll already be ready to go when we want to use it um this one's also pretty important um i didn't know if you could tell or not but i had some some yellow quite a bit of yellow tomatoes in there as well um you definitely want to add some citric acid but this will come in later when we start to preserve it start to can it water bath it um you'll need that so Let's get started. Hey guys, so we have a few tomatoes that have thawed out. Um, what you're looking at right here is a peanut fryer. Uh, check this out. Look at all those cherry tomatoes. So basically, we got it kind of pop up that way the fluids can drain as it's thawing out try to get a lot of that liquid off of there um, you can see they're real mushy and squishy um, some of the skins are kind of wrinkly they're starting to you know thaw out and split a little bit um, but yeah I just wanted to show y'all how we were letting them thaw out and letting the fluid uh, just kind of drain we got some bowls in the bottom of this this pan here. Uh, that way the fluid can just kind of drip through these holes that you see. And it goes into the big pan here. Um, but yeah. And there's quite a bit of fluid down there. I don't know if you can see it. I can kind of shake it so you can see the water move down there. Um, let's see. Yeah. You can see we got the bowls down there that it's sitting on. You can see the, as it's thawing out, all the liquid. We definitely want to get as much liquid as we can separated from our tomatoes. That way that keeps us from having to cook it off as, as long. So, all right. I just wanted to show y'all where we was at in the process so far. I'll be back. Hey guys, it is the next day. 
of processing these frozen tomatoes from our garden, uh, the 2021 season. Um, we had some tomatoes that had already thawed out, so we went on ahead and processed some of those. Um, and what I mean is we went, took them through the mill and we got rid of the skin seeds and now I have them in this 18 quart roaster oven I just bumped it up to 350 because he's not quite steaming yet um, try to cook off or steam off some of the water um, but yeah it got I don't see maybe a couple of seeds, a seed here and there, but the the kitchen aid um, attachment kept getting, um, I guess, clogged up where the screen is. See, there's one, there's a seed right there, but uh, it kept getting clogged up, so we reverted back to our old one. Um, our old food strainer to help process and get rid of the skins and seeds on the tomatoes and it seemed to do a lot better which I was kind of shocked because KitchenAid is you know wonderful and awesome um, but yeah I'm letting this sit here to cook down a bit that way it'll be a little thicker um, I'll show you the uh, here's the food strainer that we ended up Having to use the screen on the KitchenAid one was just clogging up on us. And so, I mean, this one clogged up too some. And I don't know, because we got a lot of cherry tomatoes. And so maybe the skins on cherry tomatoes are a little thicker. I'm not sure. But, uh, I don't know. But he seemed to work a little bit better. This one just clamps down onto the table and you just do the winding. Uh, whereas the KitchenAid, you know, you plug it in, it does the winding for you. But um, we still got some tomatoes thawing out over here. So we're going to get these processed and finished up today as well. Um, you can see they still got some ice crystals. So you can see all the ice in there. I mean, these bad boys have taken, I mean, we left them out all out overnight. And they're still... I mean, they're getting mushy, but they're still cold. Got some ice on them. Um, but yeah, just got them in this old peanut fryer. Letting a lot of that liquid down there. I don't know if you can see that. A lot of that liquid down in there. Drip off of them, because that's less water we have to cook off of them. So yeah, we're just letting these guys thaw out. We're going to send them through the screen to separate them from the skins and seeds and cook them down a little bit so they'll be a little thicker and then we will um, start processing as far as like what we want to turn it into pizza sauce pasta sauce chili ketchup i even have something for ketchup so we will do that and then can them up We'll can it up and they should be good for, put them in the pantry shelf, be good for a year of use. So, um, yeah, I was just really ecstatic that we had a good tomato harvest this past summer. And, you know, I just need to get them taken care of before we get more tomatoes this coming up garden season. So, stay with me. I'll show you some more. We just wanted to show y'all a little bit of how we put these tomatoes through this little processor here. Stick them up in the top, mash them down in there, crank the wheel. The good stuff comes out on this side. The pulp comes out on this side. 
And as you can see, that's the skin and the seeds that are coming out. And then here is the good stuff. It takes all the seeds and skins off. You might see a seed here and there, but anyways, that's how we're separating our skins and seeds from our tomatoes. All right, guys, we are in the process of getting our ketchup. We're making ketchup first, the Mrs. Wages Season Pack ketchup with our processed tomato sauce here. Um, we got our jars heating up so they can sterilize. Um, and pretty soon, we will be putting our ketchup into those jars and um, we will get them processed and ready I got my lids and rings back here warming up this guy here is boiling good turning down a bit but yeah here's what we got going on the Mrs. Wages Create Ketchup uh, makes about five pints it says and we're down here in the steps of the combine where we're bringing our moisture or mixture to a boil and now we're going to start adding the sugar and the seasoning let it simmer a bit and then it'll be ready we can start canning it up Alright guys, we're ready to fill our jars up. So, we got our ketchup in the pan ready to go. Our jars have been sterilized. We got our lids and rings ready. We're going to load these jars up. Got to do an eighth of an inch head space. Make sure there's no air bubbles, which this is a liquid, so pretty much you're not going to have the air bubbles. But you want to be safe and go ahead and, you know, stir it around a little bit. Make sure there's no trapped air. And then we're going to wipe our rims and just dab some paper towels and some vinegar wipe around your rims and you want to do that so that your lids will get a good stick and when you put your ring on you're just going to put it on finger tight And now we're just going to fill up the rest of our jars. Alright guys, so we ended up with five pints of ketchup. Now we are going to put them in the water bath canner and get them processed. These guys will be processed in the water canner for about 40 minutes. For the spacing for the five pints so that 
they don't kind of move around they keep them stationary because the bubbles of the boiling water will move your jars around so we put the empty jars in there to keep them upright we'll be back after 40 minutes All right guys, so our ketchup has been processing for about 40 minutes. I turned the heat off and now it's been just resting in the pan for a good five minutes. So what we're gonna do is take our jars out and set them up here. Already hearing some popping. Oh, did you hear that? That was like instant. That popping you're hearing is the lids. They're sealing to the jars. So we ended up with five pints of ketchup. Well, there's our canned ketchup with our tomatoes that we grew in 2021 and turned into ketchup for 2022. We also have more tomatoes that we are processing or just cooking down. Um, Letting them steam, get the extra fluid off of there, extra water off of there. Um, it's looking pretty thick to me. Yeah, so just whenever you go to let your tomato pulp pretty much simmer, get that extra water off of it, it'll thicken up a bit. Um, and we're going to see if we got enough to make uh, the chili base and the pizza sauce. So that would be cool. Hey guys, I just wanted to come back and do a wrap up of our completed tomato processing <laughs> uh, and what we've got out of it um, we've got the ketchup we've got the pizza sauce we got the chili base um, looks like five pints of each um, I had this little one here he was left over I had some leftover pizza sauce and chili base, so I just mixed them together. It's just a smaller jar. Um, we'll probably just throw him in some spaghetti sauce or something for extra flavor. Who knows? Um, I did have this, just one jar left of just the regular tomato sauce with nothing else added to it. And you can see, oh, pans in the way. You can see it kind of separates a little bit but anyway yeah everything's sealed um, everything looks good we'll take these rings off and put these guys in the pantry um, anytime you can something make sure you put the date on it 
Uh, there's been plenty of times where, you know, <clears throat> I canned and forgot to put the date on there. But anyway, that'll let you know these, all of this will be good for a whole year. So, and I'm sure we will use it before the year's up. Now, ketchup's new to me. As far as canning, uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Charlie said it tasted more like barbecue sauce, so <laughs> that's cool. Uh, we'll use it, though. Um, oh, I'll show y'all our um, pantry set up here. Uh, he built this. Put a screen in here and just open it up. We got our jellies, some dried veggies. Uh, we dehydrated some peppers. We got some dehydrated tomatoes. Um, just some sausage. Some soups. This is pizza soup. Uh huh. And it was February last year, so we didn't hurry up and eat that. Uh, here's some pasta sauce we made. Some broth. Um, beef stew. Some pickled peppers. Uh, just different things we've made. Here's what everybody likes. <laughs> the salsa. We make a lot of salsa too. So, yeah. You can definitely grow your own food and can it right up for your family. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to let y'all see the process of how we do it and, um, and how much we got out of it. All those tomatoes we grew that we couldn't do nothing with, you know, um, just threw them in the freezer and canned them up. Made different sauces out of them. Um, I mean, there was tons of tomatoes. I even gave tomatoes away. I ate a lot of tomatoes fresh. Lots of tomato sandwiches. Still had lots of tomatoes left over. So, it was a really great tomato year last year. Uh, one thing I did notice, we had a lot of cherry tomatoes. Um, I think I'm going to try to do more slicers. <laughs> Some more bigger, meatier type tomatoes. Um, but anyway, there it is. Uh, any questions or anything, shoot me a comment down below. Um, otherwise, I will catch y'all on the next one.